The first and probably most common mate is fastened. The fastened mate restricts all degrees of freedom and is a great option when you want to lock apart in all directions with a single mate. A good example of this would be mating a bolt to a hole. To create a fastened mate, start by clicking the fastened mate from the toolbar. Then mouse over a mate connection point on the part that you want to mate. A tip is you can use the shift key to lock the mate connection points on the screen. Left click the mate connection point you want, then move your cursor over the part you want to mate that part to, and left click another mate connection point. Onshape will then bring those two mate connectors together. It's important to point out the fastened mate restricts all degrees of freedom, so it's great in an example like this where I'm mating a bolt to a hole because the bolt should not be free to move. In the mate dialog, you have options to flip the part's primary axis and reorient the part's secondary axis in 90 degree increments. Another thing to mention is many of the mates in Onshape, including the fastened mate, have an option for offset. If you check the box for offset, you can enter an offset in any direction. After entering an offset, you can see there's now a distance between the two mate connectors. There are also ways to change the orientation of a mate connector and even create a mate connector where no mate connection point exists. We will be covering these topics in the future. The next mate on the list is the Revolute mate. The Revolute mate allows for one rotational degree of freedom and is great when you have a part that rotates but doesn't move in any other way. To create a Revolute mate, first click the Revolute mate command from the toolbar, then select a mate connection point on the part that you want to mate. Then move your cursor over the part that you want to mate that part to, and select another mate connection point. Onshape will then bring those two mate connectors together, but more importantly, you still have a rotational degree of freedom. So as you can see, if I animate the mate, it is still free to rotate. The next mate on our list is the slider mate. The slider mate allows for one linear degree of freedom, and is great when you have a part that only moves in and out in one linear direction. So for example, here I want the vice jaw to slide along the vice base. I'll click the slider mate from the toolbar, then select a mate connection point on the edge of the vice base. Then a mate connection point on the edge of the vice jaw, and Onshape brings the two together. You can see if I animate the mate, it is free to move in a linear direction along the edge of the vice base. One thing to be aware of is the option for limits. For many of the mates in Onshape, including the slider mate, you'll see a checkbox for limits. If you check this, you can establish a minimum and maximum range of motion for any of the degrees of freedom in that mate, especially useful in an example like this, where this part should only travel so far before stopping. The cylindrical mate allows for one rotational degree of freedom and one linear degree of freedom, meaning your part is free to rotate and move in and out. In this example, I want to create a cylindrical mate between the handle subassembly, which consists of the spindle and handle mated together with a fastened mate, and my vice base. To create a cylindrical mate, click the cylindrical mate command from the toolbar, then click on a mate connection point on the part that you want to mate. Then left click a mate connection point on the part that you want to mate that to, and Onshape will bring the two together. As you can see, the cylindrical mate allows for one rotational degree of freedom and one linear degree of freedom. One last thing to mention is Onshape only solves for the active mate while in the mate command. So you can see the fastened mate that attaches the handle to the spindle is being ignored while I create this cylindrical mate. I can either accept the command to solve everything in the assembly, or click Solve. So these are a few of the basic mate types you'll need to get started. Notice with all of these examples, only one mate was needed to define a part's location, unlike many traditional CAD systems that require you to define a part's location using a combination of mates. Next up is the pin slot mate. The pin slot mate is similar to the cylindrical mate, allowing two degrees of freedom translation along the x-axis, and rotation about the primary axis. By default, Onshape chooses the first part selected as the slot and the second as the pin. If the x and y axis of the mate connectors are not aligned, the orientation of the x and y axis of the first part determines the translation direction. To adjust the orientation, implicit mate connectors can be edited after the mate creation. Editing implicit mate connectors will be discussed in a future video. Notice, I set limits on the pin slot mate between the bolt and the slot. After moving the bolt to test the motion, right click on the mate and select reset to reset the bolt to its original position. 
The parallel mate allows four degrees of freedom, translation in X, Y, and Z, and rotation about Z. Use the parallel mate for designs where a part translates in X, Y, and Z and rotates about the primary axis. A good example of this is a robot arm and a box. The box should not pivot with respect to its own center, but should be able to move up and down, left, right, front, and back with respect to the robot base. And the bottom of the box should remain level or parallel to the robot base. Create a parallel mate between the bottom of the box and the robot base to prevent the unneeded rotation, but still allow the box to move up, down, left, right, front, and back. The ball mate allows rotation in X, Y, and Z directions. Enable the limits options to set a maximum angle from the Z axis. Use the ball mate to create a ball and socket relationship between the mated parts. Let's use the ball mate to constrain the arm into the bushing. Finally, the planar mate allows three degrees of freedom, translation in the X and Y directions, and rotation about the primary axis. The planar mate is usually not the best option for most assembly applications and should be used sparingly. Remember, the majority of mating scenarios can be completed with a single mate non-shape. If you create more than one mate between any two parts, stop and reevaluate your design. Remember these eight mates are interchangeable. To change the allowed motion, edit the mate and pick a different option from the pull down. Mating an on-shape allows you to mate any two parts with a single mate feature, defining the motion needed by selecting the mate type. The tangent mate is unique compared to the other mate types. It is even separated in the assembly toolbar to indicate it requires a different mating scheme. Instead of using mate connectors, the tangent mate requires you to select an entity from each part to determine the tangent relationship. Valid selections include faces, edges, vertices, surfaces, and sketch entities. A good use case for using a tangent mate are cams and can followers. To create a tangent mate, select the command in the assembly toolbar. Then, click the geometry entities to be tangent, one from each part. Be sure to add one selection to each selection box. To reverse the tangency, click the opposite direction arrows. The tangent propagation option allows for finer control of the tangent mate. When this option is enabled, the tangent constraint propagates to adjacent tangent faces. With this option disabled, only the selected entities defined for the tangent mate maintain tangency. Once complete, accept the mate. The tangent mate is added to the mate features list and can be edited like any other mate type. The tangent mate is unique and only requires entity selections for each part to determine the tangent constraint. 